I'd like to take just a few minutes here to talk to you about guides and the role that they serve in the video game writing ecosystem. The inspiration for this, as you may have guessed, is there's been a lot of news about Kotaku lately, news that people online are taking with perhaps too much glee. I know it's it's a terrible site, it's got horrible clickbait, and everyone's talking about themselves. It's all authors who want to write for Mother Jones, but they weren't good enough. I get it. I get it. But I want to take set all that aside and just talk for a moment about what is going on and what it means as someone who has a tiny, tiny amount of behind-the-scenes experience at publications like this. I am actually fortunate enough, you could say, to write for a smaller publication where nobody really cares all that much what I write about, as long as it is interesting in some way. It doesn't need to be super relevant. It doesn't need to be chasing a trend. So I've done things like write two separate articles on a Chinese FMV game that no one in the West has ever heard of. Uh, I wrote an article based on the Death Vegas video that, as of this recording, has all of six views. It's not the first article I've written about a fairly obscure old Flash game. My point is, I have a lot of personal freedom here. That's because I have not staked my financial life to any of the sites I write for, and the people who run those sites are also not staking their finances to them. They're passion projects, and there's a lot of advantages to doing that. But many people are not in that position. They are trying to make money. They are trying to make a living at this. And when you are doing that, you have to approach this in a very different way. So the article in question has just hit a site called Aftermath regards Kotaku's latest editor-in-chief uh, resigning and the cause of this was a new order, uh, an editorial edict, as the uh, article describes it, where they want Kotaku to pivot to guides. Now, Kotaku has never been known for guides. Some large sites are. Uh, IGN has a lot of guides. Game Rant has a lot of guides. Kotaku really doesn't. It's not what they're known for. But not only do they want to pivot over to make it a more guide-focused publication, they're wanting 50 guides per week. And a lot of people who really don't know anything about how this works, many people who haven't read any video game publications in a long time are making little cracks about this because I don't think they understand what is going on here. And the first thing you need to understand is that for video game publications these days, uh, game guides are their lifeblood. It's not reviews. People are saying, oh, Kotaku should do more reviews. Nobody cares about reviews. Nobody cares. People care about Metacritic. People care about all the reviews compiled together, but nobody cares about individual reviews. And I know this because I've tried to shop reviews around. Nobody wants reviews. And granted, I'm, you know, Jimmy Indy over here writing reviews about tiny little games. But it's not like you're going to get anywhere writing reviews for AAA titles either because IGN's going to crush you. All right? So it isn't reviews. It isn't that kind of coverage. The lifeblood, especially for mid-sized to smaller publications, is guides. And specifically, it's what you might call micro-guides. Now, a micro-guide is, as you'd imagine, just a guide to a specific part of a game. So this can include guides to beat a certain boss, guides to uh, earn a certain achievement, guides to farm some item or to gain experience or guides about certain secrets. For multiplayer games, you have guides for characters, guides for maps, guides for level types. You have guides for builds. Uh, build guides are a really big deal. I mean, without going into detail, I can say that as much as we are kind of a different publication where I write, um, some of our biggest articles are build guides for Destiny 2. It's just how it is. It's That's what people are looking for. It's because so much of video game writing, so much of writing in general, but especially in this space, is about searches. If you look up, I actually had a whole presentation about this that I may need to revive because I had a few comments about Kotaku 
and how they're actually a little bit different in this regard. But when you look at uh, video game sites, especially the big ones, almost all their traffic is from Google or some other search engine. These are SEO websites. And if you go down the list to the mid-tier sites, which are often sites you may have visited in the past, but you don't really know them, you couldn't name them. In this case, basically 100% of what they do are SEO guides. Now, there's been a lot of discussion lately about SEO and what a menace it's become and how it's really made, it's made Google worse, it's made the internet harder to use, everything's really bland, there's a huge amount of useless information out there, you can't find what you want. I'm going to avoid all that for the moment. I have really strong opinions about SEO, and yeah, it is terrible, but it is with us. If you are writing on the internet, depending on where you're writing and what the topic is, you are depending on one of what I refer to as the two evil stepsisters. You are either writing for a recommendation algorithm or you're going for SEO. And yeah, we all obsess over the Cinderella story where someone succeeds without bending to either one of those, but that is extremely rare. It just does not happen. So what gets good SEO for video games? It's guides. But the problem with writing guides, even, even or even especially for major games, is at the top, you've got IGN, you've got Game Rant, you've got these A-tier publications that are massive. Like, you you have no idea how big IGN really is, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Granted, that's mostly because they're going into, like, TV and movies now, but they also have entire teams at these larger sites dedicated to doing guides for major games. Uh, live service games they love because they get to keep going back and doing guides over and over and over again. So you can't just write a guide for a major game and expect to get noticed. You'll get crushed. So what you do is you pick out one of these really specific areas and hope that, oh, you know, this boss I wrote a guide for, maybe they'll become the boss no one can beat. And so they'll all go searching and they'll find my guide. And for mid-tier publications, that is their life blood. I'm going to give you an example here. Now, a while back, I was looking around at some of these mid-tier sites to try and pitch some of my own work too, which was futile because as I quickly realized, you know, I'm a feature writer and there's not a lot of feature writing in video games, alas. And all of these people wanted just short articles that were just cranked out. And these are high volume websites that are posting, you know, 50 to 100 times a day with a relatively small staff because they're just really short articles and they just crank them out. And especially they like to crank out articles about whatever is the newest release. And at the time, the latest major AAA release was God of War Ragnarok. So I was curious as to how much they were writing about this game. So I did a search for it. And in a 24-hour period from the time, I would this would have been maybe two or three days after the game dropped, probably less. But within a 24-hour period, they had written 23 articles about God of War Ragnarok, almost all of which were by two people. And a strong majority, I would say at least two-thirds of them, were guides. And what you could see is these people were doing is probably every one of them had like a laptop set up next to wherever they were playing the game. And whenever they would get to something notable, whenever they would get through a boss or get an achievement or anything like that, they'd stop the game, type a type a type a, send it off, go back to the game. And they were doing this all day long because for a lot of these smaller publications, you are absolutely still on the treadmill. You are running the Red Queen's race, just like everybody else. It's not about quality it's about quantity and that's just life when you're writing in this space now back to what's happening at kotaku i do not know what's going on behind the scenes obviously i am not privy to this world i've pitched articles to kotaku because many of the things that you hate about them indeed many of the things i hate about them made me think that maybe they would accept some of my more culturally oriented work they did not and now I'm beginning to see why, because they are lean to SEO, and that's the problem I have. Features are not SEO friendly. None of my work is SEO friendly, with the possible exception of something like Chinese Final Fantasy VII, which is an outlier. I rarely write about trends. But what's happening there is they are probably having financial troubles, as many websites like that are. 
Uh, the problem with sites like that is that the money they take in is always dropping, so they have to keep growing and growing and growing and growing. And how do you do that if you're Kotaku? Well, it used to be by leaning into clickbait, which we don't need to talk about. Everyone knows about Kotaku clickbait, but I think maybe that's not working for them anymore. So now the thought process from their higher ups is, well, guides are popular. These little micro guides are popular. We've seen these sites that are doing dozens and dozens and dozens of these things every week. We should do that too. Now, the immediate problem, and you know, you can crack whatever joke you want after I say this, but it's true, is this does diminish the value of the brand. Because if they are reduced to being just a guide mill, it does drop them from being an A-tier video game publication, one of the more significant sites, to really just being another mid-tier also ran that people don't even really know all that much about. Like it or not, Kotaku has a distinct identity. And the kind of sites that do this SEO grind do not. People don't care about the sites. You do a search for something you want to know, you find the article, you read the article, it helps you or it doesn't, either way, you are done. And you never think about that site again. You listening to this have probably been on a site like this and I would be amazed if you could remember what the name of the site is or anything else that was on it, because nobody cares. And in many ways, this dilution of the brands is a problem, not just in video game writing, but in all forms of writing. Like, it is just a terrible, terrible time to be doing this right now. There's a reason I'm trying to transition over YouTube, because my hope which it's been a bit of a rocky road so far, but I have had at least a tiny amount of success, is that some of my work will do better as a video essay because video essays on YouTube can be fairly eclectic, especially in the video game space. Feature articles are dead, long live video essays. That's kind of my principle. But getting back to the point, a lot of people who are making these cracks... Because I've seen, I've read all of the, the bad faith idiocy. Holy shit, bad news for Kotaku brings out the worst people. The worst people in this hobby. I don't need to name them. I don't want to name them. You know who I'm talking about here. And so many of them, I think, don't really understand the significance of this. They just think it's absurd to write 50 guides per week, which is what the standards are. But honestly, when you look at these micro guides and uh, the number of people they have working at Kotaku, it's ridiculous in that they're not a guide driven publication. But the idea of being able to do 50 of these little micro guides, there are sites way smaller than Kotaku that pulled this off. Uh, I've done a few myself. Uh, fun fact one of the most popular things I've ever written was a micro guide for, it was Casey's mod for inscription. It was for the grizzly bosses challenge, the ones where you fight the bears at the end of each round. Now that one was quite a bit longer. That one's still on. In fact, that's one of the most popular things I've ever written on medium. And a big part of it is SEO even now. And it's, that was probably two, probably more than two years ago. I wrote that. I don't know. When did Casey's mod come out? Uh, it still gets daily traffic. And that is what they're hoping for with this SEO lean. Now, that one's a little different. I'm tempted to link to it, but it's not actually a good representation of what these are. These little micro guides are in many cases just a few hundred words long. Uh, the one I wrote was probably like 1,500 because that's the way I roll. But also because, again, I have a lot of liberty since I don't, depend on the work I do here to make a living. So I wrote that micro guide because I was playing through Casey's mod. I encountered that challenge. I thought it was amusing. I ended up being pretty good at it. I beat it several times and I thought, you know, I should write a guide. And I did. And that was as far as I thought. I've done a few other little guides since then. They haven't been nearly as popular, but it's not something I do a lot. Now, the problem I have, the reason I could never get into this is because, again, I'm Jimmy Indy over here and nobody cares about guides for indie games unless they blow up really big. So this is something I would never be asked to do. If I was asked to do so, it would be the end of my career had I chosen to try and make a living at this. 
All of which means is this is going to be a very difficult transition because while writing a micro guide is strictly speaking not hard, if it's not something you're good at, it can be a serious grind. 10 guides per weekday is really not unrealistic if that's something you've been doing for a while, but no one at Kotaku has been doing this. It's not what they do, and that's what's going to screw them over. Not because 50 guides a week is inherently ridiculous, it's really not. It's because it's not something that they know how to do over there. And before you, again, start dancing your jig again because you hate Kotaku so much, this is a sign of the times. And if it's happening there, it's going to start to happen in other places. I'm not particularly worried. And honestly, I can't bring myself to care that much because, again, these people have rejected me over and over and over again. They don't publish anything that looks like what I do, and they likely never will. So if one of these publications die, I really don't have strong opinions either way. As I said, if I sit here and think about it, my opinions are a little bit mixed. But I hope that you got something out of this little impromptu rant. It's uh, rather late for me, and I am very tired, so I hope that when I listen to this tomorrow, it's not excessively rambling. And I will, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the main publication I write for in the description of this. I hope you will pay a visit. It's, I guarantee you, not like anything you've seen from the big dogs. Maybe you'll find it interesting. None of my work is over there right now, unless... I don't know, I suppose my last uh, Indie Monthly on there is there, which is a monthly review series I do. As I said, we're not a review-oriented publication. So for this year, last year, I was doing three or four reviews per month for them. And we're kind of pivoting away from that and doing fewer articles overall. So now I do a lot of reviews and put them into one article. It comes out about, you know, the first half of each month covering the previous month. So maybe you can check that out or check something else out. There's lots of really interesting stuff over there. Maybe you'll find something you like.